For my first 3D printer, I have gone with an ANET A8. I think that as long as you're capable, this is a pretty good first 3D printer, but you need to be comfortable with manually assembling stuff and having to modify some electronics. While I did leave this printer mostly stock, I have made a couple of uh, modifications and there are a lot of the recommended ones. Wires are soldered on the bed, there's uh, external MOSFETs there, and I even have a new power supply because the OEM one died after about four hours of printing. Now if you're familiar with this printer, you may be able to see a couple of 3D printed parts that I've added onto it. And I want to go over those in a little bit more detail in another video because there's a lot of misconceptions about what you should add to this printer. I have connected to my printer a Raspberry Pi 3 with the Raspberry Pi Foundation 7 inch touchscreen display with just some triangles that I designed and printed here to hold it upright. And if I had this printer on, you would be able to control everything directly from here. It's off right now because this fan is obscenely noisy and I'm actually going to do a video where I show how to replace it with a Noctua fan in the future. Now, aside from the power supply failing on me, the only other problem I've had with this 3D printer is my heat break actually snapped. I can't really get it to do it right now. Um, but that was because I was having some trouble with doing filament changes and I had to pull it out and heat it with a torch every now and then and the metal just couldn't handle it. So if you buy this 3D printer, you also want to get several spare parts to just have on hand. Now one of the things people have a problem with with these cheap 3D printers is that you will end up putting so many extra parts onto them that you will have spent the amount of a good 3D printer in building this one up to be an acceptable printer. And I would have to disagree with that. I would say that a original Prusa i3 Mark II or whatever, which would be around $600, is considerably more expensive than this is even with all of these fancy goodies. I bought a knockoff build tax sheet that was about $17. A new power supply should have cost me around $20. I got it at a thrift store so it was less. I bought the MOSFETs that you can get on Amazon. They're criminally overpriced but I was trying to get this done quicker. Um, I got the level sensor. I don't recommend this one. I actually have a replacement coming because it doesn't always register and has actually damaged my mat. So I'll be replacing that with PEI shortly, and I'll do a video on that as well. But I haven't really spent that much on parts. This whole setup right here adds about $100, but even if you put all that together... Oh yeah, I also have the Raspberry Pi web camera right here. But even if you put all that together, including that, you're at about $350, and that comes with capabilities that even the original Prusa doesn't have. Take that out and you have a basic 3D printer setup and you're only at about $200. It's really affordable. If you have an ANET A8 and are setting it up, please do your wiring like this. Run it out the hole right here, come around the front and then drape it like this. Having it come out over here is stupid and the cable clips really aren't necessary anyway. So yeah, just go ahead and do that all the way at the left. It just goes that way and it can reach all the way over here and all the way down just fine. The only time you'll have any problems is when this goes over that and it might catch a little bit, but it's you just, you just pull it forward, boom, you're done. Now a large portion of your time during the assembly is going to be on putting the electronics together here. Now this printer only took me six and a half hours to put together, which is a lot less than most people's experiences I've read online but I'm pretty comfortable with this. So one of the things that I did mention I put on here was these MOSFETs and they go into these connectors here and here. And I wanted to briefly talk about why people recommend doing this. Now there are driver chips here and I think maybe over here for the hot end and hot bed and while those chips might actually be fine or incapable of handling the current going to the respective components over here, the connectors themselves aren't really that great. And that's where people's problems actually stem from. Now, when I first got this printer, I went ahead and reflowed both of these connectors with some real lead solder. So they're actually a good connection. Matter of fact, I went ahead and reflowed every through hole part on here because I didn't trust the wave soldering 
and definitely not the lead-free solder. This is uh, Akmukuku from the future uh, recording another video where I'm installing a PEI print bed onto here and I just wanted to come back and give you another tip on uh, setting this up, this printer up for the first time. The edges of the aluminum bed here are razor sharp when you get this thing and I highly recommend taking a nail file and going along the edges of this to smooth it off because I gave myself a pretty gnarly cut on this one time and uh, yeah, it took a good chunk of skin off. So go ahead and do that to save yourself some pain. The ANET A8 does not come stock with a way of tensioning the belts and that can lead to some instability in your movement platforms. So when you're first setting it up, make sure to try and get those pieces good and tight. Now I could go on and on about calibration, but really I'm wasting my breath. Other people have covered this information in much greater detail than I'm going to in this video. So go ahead and do some more research from other people if you need to know more about calibration. But right now, I'm going to show you the first two things I ever printed with the ANET A8. Now, here is some piece labeled chess that comes on the SD card with the ANET A8. And I'm pretty happy with how that turned out for an initial print. But it doesn't really tell you anything other than, yeah, it works, and it doesn't look awful. So immediately after that, I printed a Banshee. Shocking. But... Uh, this does really have some good aspects to it to help you determine your print quality. So I'm quite happy with how this initial Benchy turned out. And it really, that's kind of how my whole 3D printer experience has been. This printer has been great to me. I haven't had any real quality issues with it. So overall, I'm definitely quite pleased with what I got for my money with the Anet A8. It's, it is cheap. I hate the acrylic frame. It sucks. It's not maybe as bad as people might make you think it is. Um, the firmware, yeah, you'll want to change that out definitely. And don't 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 use blue tape. Get a real build surface. This I, I printed PLA, I printed PETG, and I even printed some flexible filament on here. And yeah, it sticks, but it's not too bad. So you can do that. If you really are concerned, you can use blue tape for weird filament. But yeah, don't don't go the blue tape route. There's no reason. Also, if you're going the blue tape route, don't get matte blue tape like that because stuff just sticks to the tape too well. And then the tape paper peels off onto the part. So yeah. But if you're looking for a 3D printer or maybe you've been interested in one for a while, this is definitely a good one to go with. If you're going to get this 3d printer um definitely get a replacement power supply it comes with a 20 amp that is a 30 amp just buy it at the same time as you're buying the 3d printer because this is absolutely going to fail just assume you're going to need to do that and then if you are getting any 3d printer there are some parts that you're going to want if you're going to be doing anything really that interesting with it um you're going to want a good pair of calipers i've had these true dial calipers for quite some time actually I quite like them uh, you're gonna want something to scrape with this printer does not come with something some of them do and then a general set of good pliers most of mine are out and scattered around but you get some really nice ones like that are gonna do you a lot of good it, it does come with these cheapo side snips but you know you, you can do better I know this was a bit of a generic video and I just wanted to get a baseline video of my 3D printer and how it's set up. I'm going to be replacing this sensor soon, so I'm probably going to do a video on that and how it works, and I might cover Marlin at the same time because I'm running Marlin 1.117, and if you can, I'll adjust my exposure here. As you see, my display no longer works because I'm using the fancy unified bed leveling system, and I can't fit that on there. There might be a way. I just I haven't found it yet. I'm also going to be swapping out this uh, build sheet for some PEI. I bought it with adhesive, but I think I'm just going to clip it on for now just so I can try it out. But yeah, uh, I hope some of you found that enjoyable, maybe seeing my take on 3D printing. It's not really that different, um, but that's my printer. I really like it. I'm using it a lot for my own sorts of projects here, and this is, this is really nice. So... 
I can't believe it's taken me this long to get one. They've been affordable for quite some time, and I feel like it's been a missed potential here. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.